There are times when I like to shoot a pano, a nice stitch panorama, and some scenes it really works well for. Now there are some things that I've learned over the years about how to make panoramas work the best, and I kind of wanted to do a video where I shared a few of those tips, but I also wanted to try out and review and share that review with you of a new bit of kit that Three Legged Thing sent me a few weeks ago, which hopefully should make shooting panoramas just a little bit easier going forwards. I hope you'll enjoy the video. If you do and you're new here, don't forget to hit subscribe before you go. Hi everyone, thanks for joining me. So uh, I've got to confess, I was going to shoot this video yesterday afternoon, but the weather took a really strange turn here yesterday. We had really, really strong winds and uh, trying to shoot a video in that pretty much anywhere around here was going to be impossible. So he said I've come out this morning um, and as I said I want to shoot a pano and I want to shoot a panorama uh, basically looking in towards the beach and the town or the seafront if you like at El Campeo because I'm standing out on one of the breakwaters to do that and uh, I thought it was a good opportunity to kind of share these thoughts I've got on uh, you know how you can make panoramas easier to work with avoid some of the pitfalls that results in images that just don't work. And as I said, share uh, a review of a bit of kit that Three Legged Thing were kind enough to send me a couple of weeks ago when they sent me their new uh, Pro Range Charles 2.0 tripod to review. Now, if you haven't seen my review of Ch Charles 2.0, I'll stick a link to that up there now, and there'll be a link also in the video description. But, uh, Let's have a little chat about shooting panoramas, shall we? There are a few tricks that I've learned or a few tips that I've picked up over the years doing panoramas. So I'm gonna share those with you quite quickly now before we talk about this bit of kit. So the first thing is always shoot more of the scene than you think you need. So shoot taller by either using a wider focal length or by moving back and shoot wider by shooting more to the left and the right because you can always crop in, in fact you almost certainly will with a panorama, but you can't add stuff once you've shot it. The second tip is overlap each frame by at least one third. Now to be fair, with some scenes and with some of the software that's around nowadays, you can probably get away with less than that. But with some scenes, if there's not enough strong detail in there for the software to pick it up, it might have a problem stitching if you don't get enough you know, overlap between the frames. So if in doubt, go for more than a third because all that's gonna cost you is some storage space and a bit of processing power for the actual stitch. But if you uh, don't overlap enough, well, you might lose the image. The third thing is to shoot with manual exposure. Now, the reason for that is if you shoot with, say, aperture priority or shutter priority, what's going to happen is the camera is going to expose each frame according to what it thinks is the best light for that scene. Now, that could mean that some of the frames are differently exposed and you can end up with kind of like vertical shaded lines in the scene, particularly if you've got blue skies. And what that can mean is that you actually can see, if you like, almost divisions between the frame. It can be almost impossible to get rid of. So what I do is I expose for the brightest part of the scene and shoot manual exposure all the way through. Now, of course, if I've got a situation where um, there's too much contrast in the scene, I might have to actually shoot two panoramas at different exposure levels, or even three, and blend them as an HDR pano, but that's a subject for another video, maybe. The next tip is be very careful about filters because if you are shooting with filters and there's any kind of vignetting, that's going to cause you huge problems when those frames are stitched together. And as a general rule, I avoid using polarizers for panos, particularly if the sky is in there because polarizers have different amounts of effect depending on the angle of the light you can get a very similar effect to the one I mentioned if you're shooting uh, with different exposures 
in as much as it can create kind of vertical or, or lines in the image, which can be very difficult to get rid of. And now on to the final tip or the final trick, and that is to shoot with the rotation point of the camera absolutely vertical. Now, to be fair, you can get away with it if you shoot slightly off vertical. I mean, I've shot handheld panos that have worked, and what will happen is that the actual panorama that you get will have, you know, kind of uh, uneven edges all the way around because you haven't kept the camera level. And you can correct that, you can crop in. In fact, even something like Lightroom gives you the ability to expand the image out and kind of stretch it out. But for the best effect, what you really want to do is have the rotation point absolutely vertical. And that means your tripod needs to be level because if your tripod is off and you level a ball head, when you rotate the camera to shoot the pano, the camera's kind of twisting and not staying level. Option number one is to level the tripod legs. So you look at the little spirit level on here and you slacken the leg off and you adjust it. Or maybe this one, give it a little adjustment until you've got that level absolutely set. Now that can be a bit of a tricky process, it can be a bit time consuming, and if I then decide to move the tripod you know, left or right, backwards or forwards, or if I want to adjust the height, I've got to go through that whole process again to get it level. Now the second way to do this is to buy a tripod that has a, a leveling base in. Now what this is, instead of the tripod just having a a vertical shaft sticking up uh, through the center of the tripod. It actually has a concave bowl and into that sits a convex plate or cup or whatever it is that the tripod head sits on. So of course you can then kind of rotate that around, normally with a handle underneath, you can rotate that around to get that uh, rotation axis absolutely vertical. Now that's great if you're buying a new tripod and you want to buy one that's got that facility. But if you've already got a tripod that you like and you don't want to go out and buy a new one, or if like me you actually use different tripods on different occasions, then it might not be the best option. So that's where the bit of kit that I've just got from Three Legged Thing comes in. What we've got here is a levelling head. Now it goes between the tripod centre column or centre post and the head. Although you can use it without a head, but that's for different purposes, not so much for uh, panoramas. And what this has is the concave bowl and the convex cup that I mentioned that you can get on other tripods, only just in a smaller form. Now this particular one has a rotation at the bottom where it joins onto the tripod. Now I'm not going to use that for shooting panos because I want to use the rotation on my ball head up here because that's going to be the bit that's leveled. There's a little bubble level on it here and in order to level my tripod effectively now all I do is I loosen it off and I just move it around until I can see that that bubble level is in the center and lock it off. And now when I level my ball head, which I'll do now, which I can use my artificial horizon on the camera to shoot, to, to do, I now have a perfectly vertical rotation axis on which to shoot my panorama. That's really good. That makes it a lot, lot easier. And right now I'm going to shoot a panorama of this scene in front of me with the town and the breakwater, etc. And I'm going to do my first image with my 55 to 200 lens on. And this is going to be an example of a very, very wide panorama. Very specialized use. You're not going to do this for, you know, normal wall hanging. This is going to be for like a, you know, a big wide narrow strip, maybe along a long wall, something like that if you're going to use it at all. So let's get this one shot and then uh, we'll talk a little bit more about this and uh, maybe shoot another pano in a second. And I can see the sun is rising over there behind me. 
but I don't think there's a panoramic scene to shoot this way. And it's pretty cloudy over there, to be honest, so I don't think we're going to get much in the way of light. I've switched over to the 11 to 22 lens and I'm going to shoot a panorama now which at, I'm going to shoot at 22 mil and that's going to bring in a lot more of the sky and a lot more of the foreground but what this is going to let me get is a much more usable panorama you know much uh, much more of a conventional format instead of being really really wide and once again I'm shooting overlapping by a third Once again, I'm shooting a lot wider scene than I think I actually need for this. When I shoot a pano, what I'd normally do is at the beginning of the pano, I take a shot of my first frame, but I put my finger in front of it. And then when I get to the last one, like I just have, I do the same thing again, only from the other way. What that lets me do then, when I've got images back on the computer, I know exactly where my panos start and finish from. Not going to be a problem from this morning, because I'm only shooting a few panos. But if I was out for a day or a few days, it just makes it much, much easier to find those panos later on. absolutely loving this little head it's a really great bit of kit um, you know, compared to fiddling around adjusting each leg individually and trying to get it level this is so quick and easy it's literally slacking off one dial just look at that level tweak it bang perfectly level perfectly upright platform from which to shoot any pano it does add a bit of weight and size and bulk to the tripod that you're carrying. It's not massively heavy. I think it's something like about 300 and something grams, I think. I'll stick the weight up there now. Um, so, you know, for long hikes, maybe you're not gonna wanna carry it, but it's not, as I said, it's not massively heavy. Uh, you may wonder why I've chosen to put it on my Winston tripod instead of on the Charles tripod that I reviewed a few weeks ago. But actually, to be brutally honest, it's purely a matter of aesthetics. Um, Charles has got this beautiful matte black stylish finish with the matte black stylish Airhead Pro on. Uh, and it kind of, seem, kind of seems a shame to put the, you know, something on that breaks that up. So I just decided to put it on Winston. Yeah, sunrise is really not happening. It's very cloudy today. Although the sun isn't breaking through, there's some interesting kind of cloud patterns. So I'm uh, not a pano, just a straightforward uh, wide angle. even try a longer exposure on that so I'm just going to pop a filter on the 10 stop out see what we can do with that should let me get a minute exposure like I say not a pano but still worth shooting I'll 
I'll put a link in the video description to the product if it's something that you're interested in. And as I say, I really, really like it. It does have uses other than for panos. Um, and that, that is, there's some information on that listed on the, uh, uh, the website as well. I can use this on different tripods. I could use this on a travel tripod. You know, I've got three-legged thing, Brian, which is a lightweight travel tripod. And I could use this on Brian just as easily as on this one. So, uh, yeah, a really nice bit of kit. And like all three-legged thing stuff, very well made, looks nice, feels nice, works very, very well. Nice smooth movement to it. And uh, I'm sure backed up by their usual excellent customer care should you have any unlikely problems with it. And uh, I'm going to call this a wrap for the morning because the conditions are pretty kind of gloomy actually. I'm not sure how it's coming out on the video. And uh, I think I want to go home and have my coffee and breakfast and uh, see how these panos have come out. I hope you've enjoyed the video. If you have, like, shares and comments, all really appreciated. If you've enjoyed this video and you're new here and you want to see more of my stuff, don't forget to hit subscribe before you go. Don't forget to check out my recommended viewing at the end. And as always, I really appreciate you taking the time to watch. So thank you very much. And until the next video, bye.